Hi guys, Jangro here, and welcome to episode four of All the Mods 8. We're gonna continue with getting started on some mods and getting mods working together. We got some cool stuff with Create, do some ore doubling. We're also gonna tame these two Shibas, which I've never done, so we'll see how that goes. So stick around. Okay guys, so apparently Shibas are the same as wolves, and I think you tame those with bones. I've managed to scrape together some bones. They, I don't know, seem to be excited about these. <laughs> All right, best friends. And they've got collars and they're sitting. We can remove their leashes. Now, I think I read the thing about Shebas is that they like to fetch arrows. I have no idea what this is about. I don't know. If we shoot an arrow, will they fetch it? <laughs> That's fantastic. Is he going to drop it? Drop it. Leave it. <laughs> that is amazing. Let's shoot. Let's see how far he'll go. How about over here? You got it. You can do it. Uh oh. He's he's lost it. Look at him. He's all sad. Oh, he got it. What's the matter? Why are you all sad? Oh, sorry, dude. Okay, I don't know what's up with the storm clouds, but I can just right click on him and take the arrow back. Okay, well, that's fun. Is he lost? What is with all the storm clouds? You wanna, how about you go home? Here. Go get that. No, no, this way, this way. I don't know why he's so sad. Let's bring him back on a leash. Has he lost his friend? Is that it? Sit. Good dog. Okay, well, there we go. Shiva's. Okay, let's see if we can... See if we can breed these guys. And look at this guy. <laughs> it's baby dog with a giant head. What in the world? That's fantastic. You sit. Can't get to them in the flowers. This is killing me. This is absolutely killing me. Okay, guys, you just protect the bees. Before we go too much further, let's take a look at our quests. I think we've got some quests here. Food and farming. Yeah. We've used the shears, I guess, on sheep. And we get some wool and some XP. I don't know. We've managed to get some leather. Toast. That looks really good. How can we make toast? Oh, wow. We just smelt some bread and we get, we get some serious saturation from that. Okay. We should be cooking our bread. That's good to know. Uh, we also have here... The bounty board. We've killed some things. So we've killed some zombies. We've killed some skeletons. Killed some spiders. And we've killed a traitor. We get the sword of Alpha GG. A no soliciting sign and a pedestal. Okay, let's put up our no soliciting sign right here. Does that make him go away? Just makes him not spawn. But we have this sword of Alfred. Um it doesn't seem to be anything special. Let's just display it on our pedestal that we got along with it. I assume we can display stuff on here. Nice. That's pretty neat. All right. What do you have? Player damage plate. That's too expensive, but... Free leads. Did you go in here? Yes, you did. You cannot escape. Okay, so in the small amount of time since the last bit of the video it was actually quite a while and my dogs died i got distracted left myself online and since this is a server mob spawned killed me and the dogs so that's sad rip shibas i hardly knew you so i'm gonna have to find some more of them at some point they were fun to have around uh, but for the next part i want to 
do some ore doubling automation. We've been struggling with this ore hammer and we've been, we've been doubling ores manually long enough. And looking around at ore doubling, raw iron. So we've got the hammer, which we know doubles or raw ores into ore dust. Uh, poking around, I discovered that we can put we can put raw ores inside a mixer, which does automated shapeless crafting with a hammer, and it will double them automatically for us. So I'm, I'm laughing, thinking about a hammer swirling around in there with the mixer. Uh, but we're going to automate this process, and then we're going to smelt it. And part of this we're going to need is brass funnels, which requires rose quartz. And let's get safe and just quickly look at brass funnels. In order to make a brass funnel, we need an electron tube, uh, which requires iron plates. That's easy, but polished rose quartz, which requires rose quartz, which requires nether quartz and some redstone. So we're going to, we have to go to the nether. So I went off and I got some, I got some obsidian. There's a pool of lava nearby. I just dumped some water on it and we got some obsidian. So let's put up another portal. Let's plan for having our base more in this direction. And we'll stick the nether portal kind of up here on the hill. Like, how about right here? So let's, let's tuck it down here. I made that too wide. I think this is okay, though. Is it? Two, three, two, two, three. And then block. One, two, three. That, that should light up, right? Extra big portal. Yes. I don't have any gold on. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what we got. Let's just see if we can get some quick quartz. This is not pretty. There is quartz around though, I think. Yep, I think I see some over there. This is a brimstone cavern. There's some quartz, okay. What a terrible nether. That's prosperity ore, but that looks like... I just need to be careful. Uh, piglins. That looks like quartz, right? Yes. We don't need very much. It's actually probably enough. Let's grab a little more. But taking a quick look around... Not a very nice nether. Okay, let's get out of here. What was that? Did it come through with me? It was like a nether version of a silverfish. Okay, well, we can... Let's cap off our portal with brimstone. There we go. Okay, so to make these electron tubes, we need to make polished rose quartz, and rose quartz is nether quartz and rose quartz. So let's let's make some of that. We've got everything we need here. Let's just make a little. We've got uh, we need to make sandpaper also. And then if we take the rose quartz in the offhand and sandpaper in our hand and we right click we can polish the rose quartz and there we go we've got one of those and we can make an electron tube with an iron plate let's head back out i think we have everything we need out here for this we've got some iron here's our engineer's hammer so we need one iron plate for this Electron tube. And there we go. Now we can make with brass and kelp, which we have some in here. Brass, kelp. And now we can make a couple of brass funnels. We'll need the brass funnel for later. Let's clean out our inventory a little bit and we'll be right back. Okay, so in order to double our ores, we know that we can take an ore hammer and put it in a into shapeless crafting with 
with an ore, raw ore, and we'll get the dust from Shapeless Crafting. So for this, we're going to need a mechanical mixer, which is made with cogwheel, casing, and a whisk. And the whisk is just some iron plate and andesite alloy. Uh, so we went ahead and made a mixer. And there we go. And we're going to need to get... The mixer needs to spin quickly, so we're going to use this top cogwheel here. And a mixer also needs a basin, which we made. Let's grab some gearboxes, some cogs, belts, funnels, and some barrels. And what we're going to do is put the basin, I think, right here. Uh, but let's line things up with this belt. So we put this right here and run the belt over here. Like this. And then a vertical gearbox right here. So let's put the basin here. And I'm raising this up a little bit so we can use the same belt to pull stuff out of this basin. And if we put the cog up here to spin the whisk and then a couple of shafts, we've got our whisk going. Now if we expand this belt out a little bit, um, like this, then a basin going onto a belt creates this little chute here. And it pulls out only the things that are from a completed recipe, I think. So that's nice and handy for shapeless crafting because we can just dump stuff in here. It'll make the thing and pull out only the ingredients after they've been processed and completed. Uh, so in order to get stuff in here, we need a belt going from over here and another gearbox right here to spin that belt. Oh, and we need a shaft tucked in right there to spin this stuff. If we put a barrel right here, not right there, right there, and we'll put a barrel right here. This is going to catch the things that come out of here. And now we just need an andesite funnel to pull in here and one to pull out of that. And if we put raw ore in here, it's going to go into the mixer. And let's come back after it stops raining. Okay, while we were waiting for the nighttime, <clears throat> we slept away the rain and I grabbed some raw copper. And now if we put an ore hammer in, in here, which we can do just by putting it in there. Now we've got an ore hammer in here see it in there and if we put some copper in here it's gonna get mixed up with the hammer and just the copper dust comes out and the hammer stays in and takes no damage so at this point this thing is basically an ore hammer and we just fill this thing up with some copper it's all gonna go in here get processed and come out oh we didn't put a funnel on there so everything's just dumping off the end, but that's fine. Go pick that up. Because we don't want to use an andesite funnel here, we want to use a brass funnel here and filter out stuff that is... So if we take the brass funnel that we made, we also need a, a filter. It's right here. It's an attribute filter. And we make that with wool and two brass nuggets. We have wool in here course not. Let's go grab some wool. Press nuggets and wool. There we go. And we have an attribute filter. Let's grab our... Oh, we already have the brass funnels. So the way the attribute filter works is that we can set this up to only allow things into it that match certain filters. And to do that, we want to make sure it is not multiple. So we put a reference item in here, which is can be smelted, which is exactly what we want, but we want it to be the opposite of that, which is add opposite attribute to list. So cannot be smelted. Click check. And now our filter has the attribute on it to will not let stuff in that cannot be smelted. And if we put it right here in the filter, now if we put this copper dust on here, which can be smelted, it won't allow it in. It's going to stop right there. 
It's going to block it until it turns into something that can't be smelted. And we're going to do that with an encased fan. So from here, we need to grab an encased fan, which is pretty easy to make. Again, it's going to need some iron plates, which we can make with our engineer's hammer. So very similar to the whisk. So that's easy. And what else? We need some, need some materials that are lava proof. So maybe we'll grab some glass. Got some glass here, Got a little bit of cobble. What we want to do is smelt this right in on the belt. So if we put some glass down here and here and some glass here and here to hold our lava and the fan's going to blow into the lava and we need something to stop the lava from flowing out which a pressure plate does nicely and i think and we have a bucket of lava right here let me put that right there so now this fan is going to blow the lava the heat from the lava across the belt hopefully that's at the right level and it's going to smelt that dust so we just need to get this turning and this is lucky we've got this right here that is not at the right spot is it let's do it like this let's turn that and then we'll turn that and now it's blowing is it blowing in the right direction it did it we couldn't see it, but it was smelting that copper into a copper ingot. So now if we just th like throw this copper on the belt, just throw this entire stack of copper on here, and it's gonna get smelted right there in place. And as soon as that's done smelting, there it goes. Now we can throw some copper in here. And it all gets processed. So now we're doubling ores just like that. Okay, and I realized that I couldn't see what was happening from the fan because I had particles turned off for performance purposes um, in the shader settings. So I turned them I turned them back on. So you can see you can see what's happening here with the fan. It's actually blowing really far. I need to watch out for that. So there we go. As the blue moon rises and we're feeling lucky, we can end this episode. We have set up a really quick kind of non-conventional or doubling. So once we get a fortune pickaxe, we're going to get like three times raw ore out of uh, ores. And then we're going to be able to double them for six times or multiplication, which is just amazing. So there you go. I hope you this episode was useful it's a pretty specific one if you've got ore hammers you can put them in a uh, mixer like that and get ore doubling pretty cool if you like the video please like the video subscribe leave a comment let me know what you think i will see you next time thanks for watching i appreciate you